An ability to understand the financial health of your church or ministry is one of the most vital skills. As our CEO Nathan Camp is fond of saying, you can delegate gathering or reporting the data, but you can't delegate understanding it. No one got into the ministry to be an accountant. However, we're all called to be good stewards, and that starts with understanding how to read your organization's financial reports. This Star Church video blog starts right now. Welcome to this week's Star Church video blog, available right here on our website or on our YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to click the like button, which makes it easier for others to find us online. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to be notified when we post new content. Financial statements offer a window into the health of a church or ministry, which can be difficult to gauge using other means. While accountants and finance specialists are trained to read and understand these documents, many pastors and church planners are not. The effect is a lack of critical information. Your organization's balance sheet is also commonly referred to as a statement of financial position or statement of financial condition. The statement's based on the accounting formula, assets equal liabilities plus equity. This equation is mirrored on a for-profit balance sheet. However, net assets are replaced with retained earnings in the equity portion of the balance sheet. The balance sheet's the best overall perspective on your church's financial health and stability. The assets on a statement of financial position are classified as either current or long-term if the nonprofit has chosen to present a classified statement of financial position. Current assets are the most liquid. It means that they can easily be converted to cash in a relatively short period. Fixed assets are long-term since the assets are expected to be available for a term longer than 12 months from the measurement date. That's usually the year end. Similar to assets, liabilities are also classified as current or long-term based on the closeness to maturity. Current liabilities include money owed to creditors within one year. Long-term liabilities are due over one year. Net assets or equity is the total amount of residual assets remaining in the nonprofit. Often referred to as the PL or income statement with for profit companies, the nonprofit titled Statement of Activity follows the same basic formula revenue less expenses equal the net revenue. In a for profit, this is referred to as earnings. The nonprofit statement of activity shows the funds coming into the organization less the cost of operating the organization, which is your net revenue. Your church's revenues, gains, expenses, and losses are listed on your statement of activity. Revenue is money earned from your church's normal business operations. The expenses are the costs associated with operating the organization. When your church sells one of its assets, it can experience a capital gain or loss because this activity is not part of its central and ongoing business activity, or in this case, preaching the gospel. Revenues, less expenses, plus gains, less losses, equals the overall change in net assets. The dollar amount of the change in net assets listed in the statement of activity is also found on the cash flow statement under the operating activity section. One of the reasons nonprofits track expenses is to report on the percentage of funds that go toward programs compared to the funds spent on administration costs, such as employee salaries and fundraising. The statement of cash flows is similar to the one used by for-profit entities. The statement of cash flow presents operating, investing, and financing activities to show the sources and uses of cash. The direct method shows in the operating activity section the ins and outs related to cash flow provided by and used in operating activities. The indirect method starts with the change in net assets, followed by additions to or subtractions related to changes in the statement of financial position to adjust the change in net assets to a cash basis. Whew, sounds like an awful lot, I know. But the statement of cash flow is divided into four sections. The first section of the cash flow statement is cash provided by or used in operating activities, which shows the cash flows in and out of your organization in relation to its mission related operation. The second section, cash flows from investing activities received from or spent on its capital investments. The third section, financing activity, shows the ins and outs of cash related to the nonprofit's borrowing activities, which is also listed on the statement of financial position. The final and last section is the supplemental information, which presents cash paid for income taxes and interest and the non-cash transactions. 
Something else to keep in mind uh, are the footnotes. Now, footnotes or disclosures are just as important as the individual statements. The information in the footnotes allows the reader, or in this case you, Pastor, to glean greater details so that you can truly understand the numbers in the various statements. The footnotes provide accounting policies utilized in preparing the financial statements, as well as information about the components of the numbers presented in the financial statements. The footnotes are critical to understanding the statements and should be read in detail. Does all of this sound big? It's probably because it is. Not everyone is comfortable engaging with this kind of detail-oriented numbers and reporting. That's okay. That's why we started the bookkeeping service powered by Star Church. As part of the bookkeeping service, you're paired with one of our experienced Start Church bookkeepers who will work with you to properly organize your data, input your receipts, and ultimately help your church or ministry get ahead financially. Give us a call today at the number on your screen or by visiting us online at startchurch.com. That's going to do it for this ministry minute. I trust that this video blog has been helpful and informative. Please like this video and share it with someone you think could benefit from this information. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when new content is available. Until next time, have a blessed week.